How can you make 2024 the year that you're finally going to start dressing better? I identified seven practical steps that you can follow to dress your best in the new year. All of the steps are crucial, so make sure to watch the video to the end. And if you follow the steps I show you, you're gonna get compliments left and right. So let's start with step one, pick your style. Without a clear image in mind, you can't really get anywhere. And that's why the first step is to first find your own style. Just open your phone or your laptop and spend some time on Pinterest and Instagram to get inspired and to figure out what you like and what you dislike. There are many different styles out there that you can choose from. You can go for a street style, you can go for the classic look, minimal elegance, a bold look, and many, many more. Now, if you follow this channel, you know that I like more of a classy, but still somewhat casual look. But whatever style you go with, all of the steps are gonna be applicable to you as well. And keep in mind that you don't need to be super rigid and follow only one specific style. You can mix them up, and as we get older, usually our styles evolve as well. So just be open-minded and flexible in your approach as well. And now that you're already on Instagram and Pinterest, I also recommend you to follow a couple of pages or personal people whose style that you really like because this is going to help you get inspired it's going to help train your eye for what outfits look good what is well put together and what doesn't look good at all and a couple of people that inspire me and that i personally follow is for example ellie gordon i really like his style he's more on the subtle elegance quite luxury style everything that he's wearing is always really well put together the colors the style the fabric everything just works really really well next up i also really like brian sakawa from he spoke style he's more of a classical style pretty much everything that he's wearing and combining looks fantastic and then i also like the accounts of luca faloni and pini parma which are two fashion brands and I think their accounts are just really nice to get inspiration about the quiet luxury look because pretty much everything that they put out and pretty much everything that they produce looks really really well and minimal and elegant and when it comes to social media it's also important to remember that it's only meant to inspire you don't let it discourage you because I know that sometimes it's a little bit intimidating you see all these people out there who look absolutely perfect they have the biggest wardrobe imaginable but keep in mind that all of them started small and on the other hand also usually people only show the very best of their life on social media so just use it for inspiration but don't get discouraged. Now that you pick your style you're ready for step two, order your wardrobe. A good starting point is to first assess what you already have. Many of us have clothes that we haven't worn in ages or that are slowly falling apart. If you didn't wear something in over a year maybe it's time to sell it or give it to charity. Maybe some of your clothes could use a little alteration because you either gained some weight or you lost some weight. So go through all of your clothes and then put everything you like on one pile, clothes that you're not 100% sure of on another pile and clothes that you definitely won't wear anymore on the third pile. Maybe you can sell some of them so you have extra budget for your new clothes and then you can also try to combine a couple of your items together to see what kind of outfits you can already build. Now that you have an overview of your wardrobe you're ready for step number three basics first. If your first pile was small then it's important to get all of your basics down first. What the basics are depends a little bit on your style choice but in my opinion I think everyone should have at least a couple of nice casual and dress shirts, a couple of chinos and wool trousers, a few nice leather shoes, one or two wool sweaters, a coat and a sports jacket. Focus on minimal designs so no logos, no patterns and ideally in darker shades because that way it's going to be a lot easier for you to combine your clothes together and then you can focus on quality over quantity. Try to go for the highest quality pieces that you can afford at this moment because in the end they're going to last you much longer. Again here it's the same as with pretty much everything in life. If you buy cheap you buy twice. Now that you have a good overview of the items that you're still missing you can go on to step four the changing room. We're so used to shopping online and it's the same for me I buy pretty much most of the stuff that I own online but sometimes especially if you're just starting out one of the best ways to train your eye and also to figure out what fits on you and what you don't like is to actually go to a brick and mortar store and just try out a couple of different outfits and a bunch of different clothes. Of course you could directly go to the luxury retailers like Xenia for example or other brands like this but the downside there is going to be that in this case it might not be the most relaxing situation for you because the clerks are probably going to watch every move that you make. So I recommend you to go to some stores that are in pretty much every major city something like Uniqlo, Massimo Dutti or maybe Banana Republic as well and then you can try out different chinos you can try out different fits you can feel the fabrics how it feels to have a nice wool sweater cashmere sweater how it feels to wear a slim fit and regular fit and you can also try different colors you can try and mix and matching different outfits and if you spend some time in the store and you've tried a bunch of different outfits this can really help you to figure out what looks good on you what you like and what you dislike and now that you tried a couple of clothes we can move on to step number five follow the rules there are a couple of rules that you can follow that really make a difference and the first rule would be the right fit because in the end getting the fit right is pretty much one of the most important decisions and parts of dressing because you could have the nicest
nicest clothes, but if they are baggy, if they are too tight, it's not really gonna look nice in the end. So make sure that your clothes fit you just right and make sure that your pants are not too long or too short. And just by doing this, this is already going to set you apart from most people out there. And one of the easiest ways to do this is to go to an alterations tailor. It's usually quite cheap to make changes to your clothes, for example, to make your pants shorter. And this way, the clothes are gonna fit you perfectly. And one thing that you have to keep in mind is that pretty much for most clothes, it's usually easier to make something smaller and tighter than to add any extra fabric and make something bigger. And that's why, for example, if you find something in the store that you really like and it's just slightly too big, keep in mind that you can always make it slimmer. But if something is too tight in the store, then you probably won't be able to add any extra fabric to it because usually most manufacturers don't really leave a lot of excess fabric that you can work with. Rule number two is to invest in high quality and particularly shoes. In a perfect world, we would all wear only the highest quality materials, but that's not always the case. So if you're on a budget, I recommend you to get the highest quality shoes that you can afford. Because in the case of shoes, the difference between a high quality leather and a low quality leather is usually very obvious. Of course, you can also tell the difference between a $200 sweater and a $50 sweater, but it's going to be more obvious with a $200 shoe versus a $50 shoe. Because in the end, for the $50 shoe, the leather is going to look very, very cheap and you can just tell that it looks a little bit off. And shoes can really, really make or break your outfit. So try to find the best quality leather shoes that you can afford. And if if you're on a really tight budget then I recommend you to shop secondhand because you can get some really nice handmade Goodyear welted leather shoes usually starting at around $50. Rule number three would be maintenance. Make sure that your clothes are ironed, they're clean and have as little wrinkles as possible. This makes a really big difference in how people perceive you and how your outfit looks in the end. And it's completely normal that at the end of the day, especially if you wear linen or cotton, there's going to be a couple of wrinkles of course, but try to start the day with as little wrinkles and as clean as possible. You probably heard about the rule of thirds. Basically instead of splitting your body in half with your clothes, the idea is to tuck your shirts in so your upper body makes up the top third and your lower body the lower two thirds. You don't always have to do this of course, but it can look really nice, especially with high rise trousers and with shirts that are meant to be tucked in. Basically anything that covers your butt should be tucked in. Casual shirts that end between your belt and your crotch can be worn untucked. But whenever you wear a jacket, tucked in always looks better. It always looks a bit strange if your shirt is untucked and even worse when it's looking out from underneath your jacket. Now that you know the rules, you're ready to move on to step number six, getting in shape. The truth is that if you're in good shape everything is going to look better on you because in the end how an outfit looks is all about proportions and if you're too skinny or too overweight then the proportions are a little bit off and don't get me wrong i'm not trying to body shame or fat shame anybody i just mean this as positive encouragement and i also don't mean that you need to be a bodybuilder or a fitness influencer but unless you're already in amazing shape then most of us would benefit from losing a couple of pounds and adding a little bit more extra muscle so i'm just saying this as an encouragement for 2024 because if you're in shape everything is going to look better on you and on top of that you're also going to feel and look healthier and and that's gonna have a big impact on your appearance as well. Step seven, grooming. Grooming is another essential element to dress your best in 2024. You could have the nicest outfit, but if your beard and your hair don't really look clean and well-maintained, then you're not really putting your best foot forward. So make sure that your overall appearance is clean and well-maintained. Get into a skincare routine to clean and moisturize your skin and see it as a long-term investment in your appearance. If you stick with this, your future self is going to be very happy about it. Bonus step, confidence. We all know that confidence is important when dressing well. It's really easy to tell someone to just feel more confident and to wear your clothes with confidence, but how do you actually do it? Because it's just words in the end. Well, the one thing that I found is that usually if you try a completely new look and you try to, for example, dress up a little bit more, then in the beginning, you're going to be a little bit unconfident and uncomfortable. For example, let's say that you're more of a t-shirt and jeans guy, but you want to start dressing up more. Maybe you want to wear a suit. Then the first time that you wear a suit, you might feel a little bit uncomfortable and unconfident because everybody knows you as the t-shirt and jeans guy and you know yourself as the t-shirt and jeans guy. So even though it's just your appearance by changing the way you dress, you also change a little bit of your identity. And that's why it can be a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning. So instead of going full suit, for example, you can also just slowly ease your way into it. For example, if you're a t-shirt and jeans guy, you can start wearing things with a color. So you can start with a polo shirt, then you can move on to a button-down shirt, then a dress shirt, maybe add a sports jacket as well. And then over time, you're slowly easing your way into wearing a suit without going directly from t-shirt and jeans to a full-on suit. Try to get used to your new way of dressing. And over time, you're gonna be more comfortable and more confident in your clothes. Gentlemen, if you follow these seven steps, you're going to look your best in 2024 and beyond. I mentioned how important shoes are for your overall look. So if you want to learn about the best shoes that every man should have, then click on this video right here.